God bless my brothers and sisters. Peace be unto you all in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I'm so excited about this beautiful word that the Lord has blessed us with today. It's a blessing from God. So I'm just excited. Let's try and see. Okay, amen. God is good. It's so different on the laptop to, um, you know, do the videos. So I'm just, um, I'm just getting prepared to um, make the video. I mean, uh, send out um, people that I know. So God is good. I love you all, brothers and sisters, and I'm excited about this word tonight. It will be a blessing. You know, um, God's timing is always the best time. Like I always tell many people, I never know when I'm going to be up here. I never know when I'm going to, you know, do a video or I never truly know um, when God will permit me excuse me, to speak. So I'm just grateful and so thankful for the opportunity and the, and the, the privilege. So I pray that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a Sunday and I think tomorrow is, um, maybe it's a holiday if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, I know no one's really in a rush, you know, to have to go anywhere or, you know, um, the Lord bless us. You know, it's 5.43 where I'm at today. And some of you that are in a different time zone, it's what, uh, 643 for you. So, you know, praise God. And I'm just grateful and I'm thankful for um, you all fellowship. And, you know, I love you all more than you'll ever understand, more than you'll ever know. So God is good. But the teaching today, let's look at the, um, let's look at the, the, the caption together that I have at the top. Um, the caption I posted uh, is for the title and in, in which you all see. And let me see if I can post it right here. I'll post it right here and let me see if I can share it. It's so different. I, you guys got to excuse me. You know, I'm not, you know, too techie and, you know, all these great things, but I'm trying to get it to where I can share it. I want to share the um the messages in the comments right here at the bottom. That's what I'm doing now. So God is good. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm learning. You gotta move the mouse. It's like a like one of those like like those you gotta touch it with two fingers. Okay. I'll get better, brothers and sisters. Be patient with me. You know, what, I, what I'm lacking in, in these areas, um, you know, the Lord will make it up with um, this word and, 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 and this teaching. But um, the title that I have, that heaven my Father, says, many say they believe in Jesus, but truthfully, many don't believe. Many have misquoted this scripture. I pray your heart is open to receive the truth. Yes, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But what other words are in this scripture? There's much more required. Many confess they don't truly believe. Let's look at, let's look at Father's holy words. I love you all. God bless. That's the title. Okay, so now we all know what we're talking about. What are, what are we going to be discussing today? What is the Lord giving us today? Many people will tell you, that all you got to do is believe on Jesus and that's it. If that was it, just believing on him and you'll just go into heaven, then why are there 66 books? And majority of those 66 books make up the Old Testament, right? And it shows God's wrath upon um, disobedience, God's wrath upon rebellion, God's uh, wrath upon um, Israel, it shows you how they was in the wilderness 40 years and many of them died. Um, it shows you how many have fell. 
you know, Saul for being disobedient, being evil, being hateful, Samson, you know, losing the power, losing the spirit, you know, falling in love with a prostitute, you know. So it shows you that even the people in the Old Testament, men, you know, that was was um, used by God, they still had free will. So God gave us the four Gospels and also the rest of the New Testament. The Bible say in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration of God, right? Let's take a look at that scripture together. I want to read it with you. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and I'll read with you. Let's look at verse 16 first in 2 Timothy chapter 3. All scripture was given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly duly furnished unto all good works, right? So now we understand what all where the word of God came from, right? It came from God. So whatever we read and it came from God. You don't get caught up in the translations and this and that. This word came from God. It don't matter if it's the NIV, the NLT, the ESV, the Amplified Version. Every one of those books push you to holiness. They might water down. The NIV will water down Jesus being the, be, the, the begotten son of God and say he's the son of God. But at the end of the day, all those translations still push you to holiness. They still push you to righteous living. You can't read any translation in the Bible and they say, go kill someone and you'll make it into heaven. You can't read any translation in the Bible and it'll say, go and fornicate. You can't read any translation in the Bible that accepts homosexuality. You can't, you can't re um, read any translation in the Bible that tells you to hate your neighbor, you know, kill those who do bad to you, you know, punch those who curse you. You know, and take advantage of those that despite for using persecute you. It doesn't say that in any translation. So don't let that be an excuse not to follow the righteousness. You see? So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. And I'm saying all these things for a reason before I get into, you know, um, you know, uh the title. So all scripture was given by inspiration of God. You see? So you know that everything we read, it came from Jesus. If you don't believe that it came from God, you have no business, um, you have no business of reading the Bible because that means you won't believe in anything else. You'll be deceived. You'll say the white man wrote it, the black man wrote it, the green man wrote it. If you don't believe that this word that we're reading came from God, then there's no purpose to even trying to read the Bible, or even fellowshipping. If you're believing that man watered it down or contradicted, it doesn't make any sense. Why would God allow the only thing that's going to bring us into salvation be manipulated? Why would God make us jump through hula hoops to try to find the truth in his word? Why would God make us to go read Hebrew, Greek, and Latin to try to understand the Bible? Why would he make us go through that? Or why not would he make it in English that's one of the most spoken, the most spoken and most easiest and treated language to understand? Why would he not do that? Why would that not make sense to you guys? That he'll put it in a language that the whole world speaks and the whole world understands. Even people that are Spanish say Jesus' name, they say um, Jesus, and we know that's interpret Jesus. In China, whatever they call him, how many little slashes they use to write their, the name Jesus, it's still Jesus. There's no power in any other name but the name Jesus. You never see demons being cast out in any other name but the name of Jesus. You never seen healings taking place outside of the name Jesus, right? So understand, if you don't believe that this word that you're reading came from God, you're deceived. You'll be searching and searching and searching and you'll just be running in circles. Your journey has to stop at the word of God. There's no more searching and, and looking high and low. The word of God is the mind of God. It's breath out from God. It's God's wisdom, power, and knowledge. It's God's love. It's God's correction, direction, instructions, everything that we just read in 2 Timothy. So you have to believe first that everything that you're reading came from God. Don't be deceived. 
even Brother Ronald, as I'm up here speaking, but what am I speaking? God's word. I never speak anything outside of the Bible. Neither did the brother that wrote what they heard God tell them. That's right. They spoke it. They prophesied it. The Bible said holy men spoke. Holy men prophesied and spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of Jesus Christ living inside, right? So you, you, they're not speaking on their own. You see a physical form, but in the inside, it's the spirit that's speaking out. So if you don't believe that this Bible, the word that you're looking at or you're reading or you're hearing came from God, you're deceived. There's no way that you would truly find comfort in this life or in, this, in, 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 in your belief without truly believing in the word. If you believe that the word was watered down, you believe that the word was manipulated, it was this and that. The only thing that's going to get us into salvation, God's going to let it be tainted with. That doesn't make, come on, brothers and sisters. You don't know who you're serving. This is why the Bible has been around since the beginning of time. This is why no matter how many books are published, the Bible is still the most bought book in the world. That's why Christianity is the most biggest faith in the world, belief in the world. Come on, brothers and sisters. You got to, you got to think about this now. God made sure that he was at the top just as he sits at the top of this world. And you see that Christianity is at the top of every other belief. So no one has an excuse not to believe. You see why God did that? There might be many false Christians in the world, and they are. The majority of Christians in the world are not true believers. But God still made sure that every other religion, every other human being, every other person in this world will know about him. And how would he do that? To make Christianity the most dominant belief in the world. There you go. So that means even other religions that's claiming what they're claiming, they will know of this other group of people called Christians, and they'll look into it to see what's this all about. If it was only one belief, if, 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 if anything was bigger than Christianity, what would, what would inspire others to look into it? They wouldn't. They're going to start wondering, okay, I'm Muslim, but what's going on with these Christians? And they'll start becoming intrigued, and naturally the words that's in the Bible, which is quick, sharp, and powerful, than a two-edged sword, it will pierce them, convict them, transform them, and they'll come to the truth. You understand now? So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. This is beyond you. But you have to have the spirit to have this understanding and understand it and, and be able to understand the things that I'm saying. So remember, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, verse 12 says this. For the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, right? So if all you had to do was call the name of Jesus Christ and you'll just go magically into heaven, right? If all you had to do was call on Jesus' name and you'll just go into heaven. That's that. Listen, the Bible was not written for the carnally minded, right? Those who are spiritual and those who are baptized with the Holy Ghost. We know if one part of the Bible, like in the book of Acts, tells you, whoever called the name of the Lord shall be saved. But we know it doesn't just stop there. You got preachers that will look at those one verses and say, all you got to do is believe in Jesus and, and you're going to go into heaven. But that we know that just because God didn't say, OK, whoever called the name of the Lord shall be safe, you know, and, and you guys better not be faking. Don't be calling on his name and going back into the world. First of all, God knows if you're in the world and you're calling on Jesus, that means you're supposed to be done with the world. If you're saying that I'm a believer, then that means that you're saying you're no longer an unbeliever. So why does God got to put all those details under those scriptures that say, just call the name of the Lord and you'll be safe? Why does he got to sit there and explain what I'm explaining? When naturally you're supposed to be convicted by the word. The word the Bible said in the book of Acts 2, when Peter was speaking, they were cut at it. The, they were pricked at their heart. Pricked. And when John, the was, when John the Baptist was preaching and teaching, what did the word say? They said, ah. Oh, what must we do to be saved? What was John telling them in, 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 when he was preaching to them? Y'all got to repent for your sins. You know, don't, you know, what did he tell the, the soldiers? He said, kill, murder no man and be content with your wages. That's right. So how could they be in the military and you, you can't kill? And you might be called to war. Hmm. You see how anything that's forced is not faith? John told them what they were supposed to do without telling them as they'll understand what to do. You get it? So what I'm trying to show to you, brothers and sisters, is that you read the Bible ignorantly and you read it without the Holy Spirit. So you'll misinterpret the Bible. You will see where it says that Abraham wasn't justified by works. 
And you'll say, well, it's not by works you get into heaven. But then you go to James and it says that without, without um, faith, without works, it's impossible to please God. Then you'll say, well, I don't understand why this part says it's not by works. You don't understand the scripture because you don't have the spirit. He's saying that Abraham didn't do anything to receive the faith. He didn't do anything to receive God's mercy and his grace. It wasn't anything that he did that pleased God. It wasn't anything that he did that moved God. It wasn't anything that he did righteously that made God bless him and make him follow over any nations. So it wasn't by any works that he did that made him receive the grace that God gave him. It was only obedience and him believing. So you see how the Bible, you read the Bible as if the Bible is a contradiction. And that's scary because you'll look at one verse that says, you know, all you got to do is call the name of the Lord should be saved. But then you'll read Romans 10 to verse 9 and 11. And it'll tell you that you must believe that he died and he rose from the dead. How many truly believe that he died and he rose? You see, so when you read the Bible, don't be deceived. You'll read one verse. You're dealing with a spiritual God, a righteous God, a holy God. He's not going to baby you in the scripture and say, okay, listen, you know, yeah, you, you said, well, the Bible doesn't say don't masturbate, right? All, many people will say this. The Bible say don't masturbate. Brothers, your sisters, you're thinking foolishly. Brothers, when you're masturbating, sisters, be real. Be real with Jesus. I'm your brother. You know, I, I, I never injured anyone up here. Let me ask you a question. That's foolishness. Many will say, well, the Bible don't say you can't masturbate. So masturbation is nothing wrong with that. Brothers, sisters, the Bible was not written for the carnally minded, but for the spiritual minded. We know we can't masturbate because in order to in order to arouse yourself and excite yourself, in order for your penis to get erect and for a woman to be moist down there, you have to be lusting after something in your mind or you have to be watching a porno video in order to arouse yourself. So that's lust. And the Bible says we're not supposed to lust. So you know we can't masturbate. You can't masturbate without stimulating yourself. Come on, brothers and sisters. This is foolishness. Why does God got to explain those type of things? You're supposed to be able to read one part of the Bible. And one part will explain the next part. You never read one verse that explains everything. You'll read one part of the Bible. That's why the Bible says to study, to show thyself approved unto God. A workman, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now you get it? Now you understand that scripture now. Look at 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman. That needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It goes to show you that more answers will come from other areas of the Bible, just in, not just in one chapter. You need to read it all, the whole New Testament, and study it as your life depends on it. This is why you'll read one part, and it will say, oh, well, you know, the Bible did not show another part. You'll say, well, Brother Ronald, well, what do you think about this part? Hold on. First of all, I don't think anything. Because the Bible say, lean to your own understandings and all your ways acknowledge God. If my father said it, he can't lie. Read the book of Numbers 22. The Bible says not a man that he shall lie. So don't show me, don't try to compare scriptures as if you're saying that the Bible is contradicting itself. There's no possible way. There's no possible way. Nothing else in this world contradicts itself. The moon, the sun, rises, stars, everything the Bible talks about, we see it in existence today. Everything that God said will happen has happened already. Read in the book of Matthew 24 about the last days, nation rising against nation. People are going to be fierce, backbiters, murders of parents, you know, every type of thing. You know, the love of many going to wax cold. You know, many going to deceive many false prophets. Look all around Facebook. You see all these prophets. This just came like four years ago. All these prophets just popping up out of nowhere. Everyone comes of a prophet, a prophet, 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 prophet. The word is coming to pass. So you see the truth in God's word. So don't be deceived when people just tell you, all you got to do is call the name of the Lord. That makes you live in sin. Read the rest of the verse. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall by believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made in salvation. For the scripture says, who shall believe on him shall not be ashamed. How many are afraid to stand on the truth of the word of God? You don't even speak about God at your job. You say, now listen, listen, 
It takes more faith to believe that you're not going to ever die. Come on, brothers and sisters. What a thumbs up set. No one's thumbing this up. It's the truth. It takes more faith for you to believe that you're going to live forever than it does for you to believe that no weapon is formed against your prosper. How can you say that? How can you say this verse applies to you? Think of, that's why I said in the, in the title, we're going to read the rest of the verse. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How can you believe that God raised him from the dead? When you start feeling pain in your chest, you panic. When you start feeling pain in your body, you go to the hospital. When your child is sick, you, you're in the emergency room, you're in Google looking up stuff, afraid. You lock your door at night. You know, you, you, you're scared to go to stores if there's men standing around the front entrance. You won't park far from the entrance of stores because you're afraid somebody will rob you. Brothers and sisters, you don't, you, don't, you don't display that you believe you're gonna live forever. When you won't even believe that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Some of you won't even drink tap water. I, I go places and I drink tap water. People say, oh, we got bottled waters in the refrigerator. They don't even know what I'm doing. I naturally drink water out the faucet. Why am I going to spend money on bottled waters? I can save that money. Why would I spend money? And listen, nothing wrong with drinking bottled water. Hear me out. Don't, 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 don't persecute me. Don't put me under the rifle. Hear me out. You guys know I'm not against you. I'm for you. Nothing wrong with drinking bottled water. Don't get me wrong. You drink bottled water all you want. It's a blessing from God. But listen to what I'm trying to explain to you. People will see me drinking tap water. And they'll say, oh, oh, I got bottled water. You want bottled water? I'm like, oh, no, I'm fine. You know? And people will say, well, you know, there's, 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 there's copper in the water. There's lead. You know, there's, there's, you know, there's a water contamination. If the Bible tells me that I can drink anything deadly and it won't harm me, if the Bible says if we drink poison, nothing will happen, then why am I afraid to drink tap water? See, so how can you believe that you're going to live forever but you won't even believe that your prayers will bless this water and nothing will happen to you. Come on, brothers and sisters. Have you ever seen Brother Ronald getting sick? I go everywhere, ask anybody, I drink a gallon of water a day. I drink one gallon of water a day. Any brother will tell you, anyone that's close to me, Keith, Kelgen, Sager, Michael, Nisha, anyone will tell you that's close to me. They know me personally. I drink water every day and I just get out the faucet. I go to, sometime I'll be traveling and I'll stop at a gas station and they got little faucets in there. I'll fill my water bottle up for free. I don't have to even spend two, three, four dollars. I'm saving it. You understand? So if you, you, you won't drink tap water because you're afraid what's in it, but you're telling me that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you believe that, right? That's what you're saying. Then why you don't believe that you won't get sick by drinking water? Why are you mad when someone brings your food without having gloves on? Or why are you mad when, 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 you know, certain things happen. When the Bible says to rejoice, I say to rejoice. It takes more faith to believe that you're going to resurrect and live forever like Jesus did than it takes faith to believe that you won't get sick drinking water out the faucet. So you don't even have faith in believing that your prayers will bless this water. But you're telling me that you have faith that you're going to live forever? Now you're, tell you, 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 you're afraid. You have gun license. You, you, won't even, you, you only park your car under, under light poles because you're afraid of people breaking in it. You won't leave the house certain times at night because you're afraid of robbers and thieves. But you forget the Bible tells you in Luke 10 and 19, behold, have given you power to tread upon serpents, demons, scorpions, demons, and over all the power of the enemy that nothing shall by any means will hurt you. That's Luke 10 and 19, right? So then why are you afraid? What are you afraid of? If someone comes to do harm to you, that means that it is darkness in them. You have authority over that darkness if you truly have the spirit, if you truly have faith. The Bible says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. So you're telling me it takes more faith to believe that you're going to live forever than it does to believe that this person won't hurt you because the Bible said in Luke 10 and 19, it takes more faith. Look at the disciples in the four Gospels. When they came to arrest Jesus, brothers and sisters, what happened? I want you guys to comment. Let me, let me scroll down. I want to see your comments. Let me see if I can see some comments. I want to see, brothers and sisters, I want you to write. 
Oh, sorry. Hit something. You know, I'm not good at this computer. But I'm, I'm grateful. But I want you to write real quick. You know, I never do this. I never do this. But I want you to write. Tell me, what happened when the disciples, when they came to arrest Jesus? What happened? What happened when the disciples came to arrest, when, when, they came, when, the, when the people came to arrest Jesus? What did the disciples do? I can't even see no comments. Let me see if I can. I can um, move it. Okay, it's not working. If you are commenting, I can't see. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I can't see it. But I'm pretty sure you guys. I'm pretty sure you guys are right in the right answer. They ran. We know they ran, right? Okay. I can't see. I'm sorry. So anyone that's writing me, I really. I don't know why. I can't see. But I'm trying to um. Uh, fix it. I see it says the comments, but I can't see what's being what's 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 what was wrote. So I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. Forgive me. I'm trying to. You see, I'm tapping and tapping. I know you guys probably hear me tapping the button, trying to see what you guys are writing, but I I, I really can't see. But we, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. Somebody help me figure it out. Somebody might call me or write me and brother Ronald. You know, on the on the laptop. You know, all you got to do is do this, do that. So they'll help me. You know, God has placed some awesome people in my life you know, for his glory. So we never know. Okay. So let me, let me go on. They ran, they ran brothers and sisters. They abandoned Jesus. They abandoned because they were in fear. Why were they in fear? Because they were not yet baptized with the Holy ghost. That's right. You even see in the, in the garden of a cinema, when Jesus Christ was praying, he said, pray that you don't enter into temptation. Peter and them were asleep because without the spirit, you won't truly become a prayer warrior. Without the true love for God, you won't stand the test of time. When persecution arises, remember I did the, the teaching of being a, the cost of being a disciple. Persecution arises, you'll run. Temptation arises, you'll run. Family members abandon you, you'll run. You'll run. Because there's nothing in you that's going to make the flesh submit. But look at the apostles in the book of Acts, chapter 2. They were bold. When they came to arrest Jesus in the four gospels, they all fleed. Right. When they came to arrest them in the book of Acts, they stayed there and went to jail for the name of Jesus. Even when they beat them and whooped them. The Bible said in Acts chapter four that they rejoice because they took part of Christ's suffering. But in the four Gospels, when they came to arrest them, they ran for their life. Even Peter was was behind. And the Bible said Peter even cursed. I don't know this man. And the Bible said he cursed. I mean, curse like curse words. F word, you know, all those bad things. That's right, because there was no spirit. You understand? So you see, it's not just believing. Anyone could say, I believe in God. But where's the fruit that come behind you truly believing? You will say that you believe that you're going to live forever, but you don't even live as if you believe God's word. Because they're only teaching you in these false churches, just believe Jesus and that's it. But do you believe that he died and he rose? You can't believe that when you won't believe his other words that's, he, that's written in the Bible. The Bible say, but the spirit of him that raised up, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. His spirit that dwelleth in you, right? Every believer that died in the New Testament, they were bold and they wasn't afraid. Even when Stephen got stoned, the Bible doesn't say he tried to limp away. He didn't limp away. He said, I see the Son of God. I see the heavens open. I see the Son of God. And I see Jesus sitting on the right hand of God. That's right. He didn't run. The Lord didn't run. He said, get off me. He even told Peter, I can call for a legion of angels right now. But I must go through this. Because you guys must go through this. That's right. I must be an example. I got to die for your sins, but I also got to show you not to fight, not to be afraid, not to retaliate. There was many times they tried to kill Jesus. They remember one time they tried to push him off a cliff. The Bible said he went through them. The Lord, the Lord turned invisible and, and, and disappeared. So you're telling me that you believe that Christ, that you're going to live with Jesus forever. But when your child gets sick or you get sick, you go to man. Now, you know, when you die and go to heaven. You go to God. Right. 
So why are you running to man with everything? And you're telling me at the last day of your life, you're going to run to God? Is he going to accept you? And you've been running to man and Satan your whole life on this world, your whole life in this world? Think about it. You, you get sick. You go to mercy room. You don't go to Jesus. You pray a little bit. You don't get any better. You go to man. So you don't even live as if you're going to live. For, you don't even live as if you believe you're going to live forever with Jesus. You go to man. Children get sick. You lose your mind. Oh, we got, we got to go to mercy room. Doctor, what is it, doctor? Oh, I believe she has walking pneumonia. Oh, my God. Brothers and sisters, pray for me. Pray for me. My child is sick. Pray for me. I know the Lord's going to do it. Is he going to do it? You sure? If he's going to do it, then why is this child in the hospital? Come on, brothers and sisters. You believe that God's going to heal your child, but you listen to what man is telling you. So you got the prayer warriors praying for you. They praying. Look, the prayer warriors praying. Sister in Christ, what, what they're saying? Oh, it's not looking good, brothers and sisters. Okay, we're going to keep praying. Okay. Okay, what, what the doctor saying now? These people are asking you questions, let, trying to increase their faith off of what they're praying. They should be telling you, listen, that child is healed. Get that child out of there. What do you, what you got the child in the hospital for? This is spiritual. This ain't nothing that man can do. It's only something that God can do. That's right. The same Lord that walked in, on, on this earth 2,000 years ago is a healer. He, he didn't go to man. Ask the lady with the issue of blood. If she was, the lady with the issue of blood will be turning her grave today. The lady with the issue of blood is turning in her grave today. She'll say, brothers and sisters, what's going on? Did you guys learn from me? 12 years I had this sickness, blood. I went to many physicians and didn't get better. It only got worse. Just believe in Jesus. You need deliverance. He can heal. You can deliver. You can set you free. Don't go to man. I wasted all the money I had going to physicians. It didn't even get better. It got worse because it was spiritual. It was a demon behind it. Machines can't see into the spirit. That's why they would just keep giving you one medicine, another medicine, another medicine, another medicine, another medicine. Come on, tell them, Sister Kimmy. You know I'm not telling no lie. You go to the doctor if you want to. They're going to ask you a million questions, and they're going to give you a diagnosis. You're going to come back and say, oh, doctor, this, you know, this made my stomach hurt. Then what happens? Okay, let's, let's change this and put this on. You say, doctor, I took this. This made me have headaches. Okay, let's, let's, let's give them that. You put in trust into man that don't know what he's doing in your body. I'm telling you, he don't know anything what he's doing. You guys are living in illusion. It's, you're, living, you're delusional. You don't see that doctors don't know what they're doing. That's why there's no cure for AIDS, cancer, anything. You want to know how your, your, your aunt got rid of that cancer? Because God stepped in and intervened. That's right. He did that. It was the Lord. Don't you know when Arnold Schwarzenegger the governor of, of California, I'm going to show because I'm allowed to share this. Don't, he don't even know this, but maybe he'll know now his faith may increase. Don't you know when he had a heart attack, he needed a, a, a heart transplant. Don't you know that, that what happened to him was spiritual? And you, you would say, well, if a person, if a, if a, if a spirit caused a person's heart to, to, to shut out like that, how was he able to see, doc, see God is not prideful. He don't got anything to prove. You know why you should follow God? Because there's no pride in him. He don't have anything to prove. He already made everything, created everything. What can bring him pride? He has all power, all strength, all wisdom, all knowledge. He knows the beginning and the end. How can God become prideful? So when you look in these emergency rooms and you're seeing the doctors operating, you don't know that there's angels operating through those doctors. They're not, you, you think it's the, listen, you're telling me, you're telling me this, that a person can get shot and I was shot 13 times and a person was shot one time. You telling me, me getting shot three separate occasions, which equal to 13 shots, wasn't grace? But I know people that got shot one time and died. They got shot in their arm. I was shot in my chest, my back, my body, everywhere, and I'm still here. Don't you know the last time I got shot, I seen the bullets coming at me. I seen the guy had the gun in my face. He was getting ready to blow my face off. No, I, no seriously, he was shooting at me. He was shooting with a, with a machine gun, a Mac 11. You know what those guns are. They're machine guns. He was shooting at me. But, he, but I seen he was on the passenger side. He was linked back. I was on the driver's side, and I was driving. And I seen him leaning. He was just like this. This is how he was leaning in the car. He was leaning like this, and he was linked back. And he had the gun like this. He had a long clip about this long. 
hang out the gun. I remember, I, come on, because I come from the world. I know what kind of gun he had. I know what he was shooting. And I seen him. They, they, they shot through the back of my window first, so that threw me off. And I was looking out the back of the window, out of the car. There was four of us in the car. So I'm trying to pitch it to them. I hear a car vroom, come up to me, right? Pull up on the side of me. And I just see, boop, 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 boop. I'm talking about fireballs right in front of my face. Boop, 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 like that, right? It should have been closed casket for me. I should have been dead, and they would have gave my mother a closed casket funeral. I'm just being honest. This is how close this was to me the last time I got shot. This, this was the 13th time. Now, I only got shot through the back one time when it was two cars. It was, it was an assassination attempt. It was two cars. The, the first car was, an ex, was a truck that shot through my back window. Boom! And it hit me in my back. I, I hit the steering wheel. So I'm driving with one arm, and the other arm is, is, is dislocated. So the car pulls up. I, all I hear was an engine rev. Then before I could even know what's going on, I had a Dodge Charger. So before I can even hit the gas and go fast or get away, it was already the person was linked over, almost in the driver's seat. It was a light, I remember, and he was shooting, and I seen the, 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 the barrel bursting, boom, 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 just like that in front of my face, right? So as I drive off, as I drive off, I, I, I get to um, 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 this, this place, and it was ambulance there. And I ended up getting in the ambulance. I just kept knowing I was going to die. I was ready to die because I was tired of my life and I was fed up. And, you know, I was in the world and I was in darkness and, you know, just had so much going on. Nothing, you know. So anyway, I'm not going to go into detail about the incident when I got shot. Not too much detail. But um, even people that shot me to this day, I seen them later on and I forgave them because that's what Jesus tells you to do. They, you know, people would think I'm still the same person. But they know. People was watching me for the first year, second year, like, they say, okay, he, maybe he's just playing. He was a gang leader. Maybe he's just playing. No, it's real. God chanced me. Them demons were casted out of me. I was delivered. I was healed. High blood pressure, you know, anxiety, suicide thoughts, everything, lust. It all left me when I got delivered. And he filled me with his spirit. This is, this is going on four or five years now. That's right. Serving the Lord and the beauty of his holiness, right? So the police come to the hospital, the detectives. And they tell me that the, right, the, 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 the left side of the car, the driver's side and the passenger side, was shot 40 times. Listen, they would shoot with a machine gun, a long clip. You can't even see on camera how long the clip was. On, on, on the video, on how long the clip was. It was long. They shot 40 times. I should have been dead. This is the third time I got shot. Remember, I got shot in 2005. I got shot in 2009. And I got shot in 2013. And shortly after, I got saved after that, right? My driver's side, I just got that car for one month. My mother had co-signed for me. It was um, a Dodge Charger. It was a, like dub edition, did it all and all that, you know, foolishness, right? I only had it for a month. The driver's side and the passenger side, they said it was total bullets were shot 40 times. Now, mind you, I said I was looking at the bullets coming out of the gun. Now, remember, I was a gang leader. For many years, 14 years, I, I ran the bloods, right? I know what drive-bys look like. I know what, you know, assassination look like. I know what guns look like. I know what type of gun people were shooting, right? You know, so 40 bullets hit the door. Now, just say, okay, Brother Ronald, what if you just was imagining the bullets coming out? Okay, but the driver door was hit and the patch door was hit. Now, isn't my thigh right there? Isn't my waist right there? Isn't my arms right there? Wouldn't, and the windows were down. Wouldn't those bullets uh, hit somewhere in the left side of my body? Somewhere, right? Somewhere in the body. But what about the guy that was sitting next to me? Why wasn't he hit either? What about the guy in the back seat and the guy next to him in the back seat? Why wasn't they killed? 40 bullets? It's only four of us. Why wasn't they killed? Grace. So instead of the bullets hitting my body, God just enlarged them inside the door and then let them go no further because they supposed to went through that door that close distance with a high caliber rifle that he was shooting with. They should have went through that door, through me, through the person next to me and out through the other door. I know guns, but this is, I don't know guns. I mean, I don't have guns and stuff, that stuff now. Of course not. But you got 14 years of being a gang leader. You, I, you know, I, I can't forget some things. You, you understand? So it should have killed me, went through the door. But his grace... So you think that when, 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 when people are in emergency rooms, 
it's God that chooses to intervene or it's God that chooses not to intervene. God can keep that heart pumping. The doctor get all the credit. Thanks, doc. Wonderful surgery. Not even knowing that it's God that kept you alive. He don't need any credit for it. Why does God need it? It was me that did it. Glorify me. I'm the one that did it. I made the doctor do to do that. Come on, brothers and sisters. Why does God got to do that? He don't even put his face in the sky for the whole world to see him. God doesn't care about um, receiving um, um, all this and that. You know it's God behind everything. We're supposed to naturally glorify him anyway. You understand? Some people say, oh, I went to the hospital and the doctor told me, you know, and, 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 all this, and, and the cancer is gone. Sometimes the demon is making the cancer not be seen on the, on the machine. And sometimes God is, is who might have took it away. It just depends. But everyone needs deliverance. You see? So that's what I'm just trying to show you, brothers and sisters. God might take the spirit, I mean, the sickness away, but that don't mean the spirit is not still there. That's why later on you'll find yourself still sick, still going to do different things because you had to be delivered. The spirit got to be casted out of you. You see? So this is God's grace. God gave that man a new heart. I'm telling you, this is what he told me personally. It is God that did it. They, they'll say, oh, I found a donor. It is God that sent that donor to that person. Because the people that's in position to power, God put them there. That's right. They have a job to do. Their job is to ex execute justice on this earth. That's right. That's why you got police and judges and stuff. Execute justice. What, what, are, they, what are they doing? Most of them are just obeying what the, the Ten Commandments say. Go to, you kill someone, you'll go before the judge. You steal, you'll go before the judge. Who told us first not to steal, not to kill? The Bible. Don't you know even adultery is not even, adultery is not even legal in this world. That's right. It's not legal in this world, in this country. So that's what I'm trying to show you. So it's much more to believing in God. People will say, okay, I believe I'm going to go to heaven. I believe in the Lord. But do you? Well, you don't even believe in his word. 99% of your life shows that you don't believe in God's word. Then how do you know you're going to go to heaven when you won't even believe that he will keep you um, from getting sick? All you get food poisoning when you eat. How can we drink anything deadly? How can Paul get bit by a snake and not swell up? And you get bit by a mosquito and have allergic reaction. Come on, brothers and sisters. Something is wrong. You got you, you to gotta know there's darkness inside of you. How can you get bit? Paul got bit by a snake. They, they said they watched him, waiting for him to swell up and to die. Neither one happened. You get stung by a bee or get, get, get bit by a mosquito or any bug, and you go into anaphylactic shocked. What does that even mean? I, mean, I can't even. Th those words are tongue twisters. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's like, what's the thing he's making say? I, I don't know, the little tough twist of little words. But it's what I'm showing you. I only come to tell you guys the truth so your heart can receive. I only preach the word. Think about it. You're, you're telling me that you believe that he died and he rose, right? Now, if you believe, that takes more faith to believe in that. All you've been to funerals and you've never seen a man come back to life. You've never seen a woman come back to life. All you have buried your grandmamas, cousins, children, brothers, sisters, friends. And you see them in that casket, they're lifeless. Three days go by, you, they're, on, they're under that ground. They're not the, the day of the dead where they're punching through the ground and they, they come back to life. No, but Jesus did. Now, if you believe in, in something that contradicts everything that the world says is, is foolish or is, 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 there's no possible way it can happen, you're telling me that. You tell your boss, your coworkers, I'm going to live forever. You lost your mind. What do you mean going to live forever? You can't live forever. You know, think about it. But the Bible says you will. You truly believe. Obey and do what the word says. So it takes more faith to believe that you're going to resurrect like Jesus Christ did than to believe that if I drink this, I'm going to get sick. So this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. It takes more faith to, to even believe in that part. Of you're going to live forever. But you don't even show faith that God will protect you from robbers and thieves. You like, you like the car, like, like the car, baby? Is the car locked? Make sure that car locked now. You know we live, in, we live in this neighborhood. Brothers and sisters, pray for that door handle. Pray for that car door. Let a thief go and touch that door. He'll feel like he got shot by a taser. I'm telling you. Lightning bolt will strike him. I'm telling you. Where's your faith? Where's your faith? Satan couldn't even touch Job. Satan couldn't even touch Job. Neither could a thief touch Job because a thief is being led by Satan. And if a thief can't touch you, Satan can't touch you. And if Satan can't touch you, the thief can't touch you because all of it is darkness. You got authority over that. God had to remove his hand from Job 
before those thieves came and stole, stole all his livestock. God had to remove his hand before the foundation of the house collapsed when the wind blew. You don't think wind blew before? And the house never fell. But once God removed his grace, his protection, you see, Job went through all type of catastrophes. That's right. He lost everything. Thieves came. Robbers came. Because what's in the heart of a thief? Darkness. Why did Judas betray Jesus? Because he's a thief. Who entered his heart in the, in, 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 in the, the, last, um, the last Supper? Satan. And Jesus said, go and do what you're going to do. It was a devil in his heart. That's right. What did he tell Peter? I rebuke you, Satan. Get thee, beh get thee behinds. That's right. Because Satan was influencing Peter's thoughts and his words. That's right. That's why the Bible say, cast down imaginations and every high thing. That's why he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan was speaking through Peter. He didn't have the Holy Ghost yet in the four Gospels. That's right. And then remember James and John? They said, he wants to call down fire like Elijah did because they didn't receive you. The Lord said, I rebuke you. You don't know what spirit you are of. You know, I'm, I'm only telling you the truth. You see? So think about it. Do you guys truly believe that he died and he rose? Do you truly believe that he's going to resurrect you when you, live, when you die? Do you truly believe? How can you say you believe that you're going to live forever, but you're trying to get a big house, big car, all this money, the best job in this world? For what? But Paul said, naked I can't. Um, Job said, naked I can't, naked I go. As God giveth, he taketh away. So if you believe that God giveth, then why are you working so hard. Once it gets taken away, you abandon your faith. I have people that tell me, man, Brother Ronald, I had a good job. I had money. I lost everything, man. I, I gave up on God. See? Because your faith wasn't in the giver of those possessions. Your faith was in those possessions. That's right. So Satan knew that your faith was in, a, in your possessions and not in God Almighty. So that's why Satan will constantly attack your finances. He'll constantly attack your children. He'll constantly attack your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You'll never have a stable home because your faith is more in them than it is in Jesus. He'll make your wife be so rebellious. You'll think you're living in hell on earth. He'll make your husband be so rebellious, so lustful, so everything. You'll think you're living in hell on this earth. He'll make you fight every day. He'll make you quarrel because you're not in God's word. Your faith is in everything else but God, but in his word, but in his power. A form of godliness, denying the power of. That can save them. Right? So, you, brothers and sisters, you get it now. It makes sense. Oh, praise the Lord for his word. Oh, I'm telling you, I just, I, I, I love the Lord. I love you all. What am I saying that's not true? When have I ever wronged anyone? When have I ever disrespected anyone? I give my life for all of you. You guys know that. I don't think you guys will even challenge that. I'm just being honest. I, I don't care about this life in this world. I want to be with my father. He loves me. I, I, I belong to him. That's right. So you understand, brothers and sisters? How can you believe that you're going to live forever when you won't even believe? And what the words say, you have a hard time loving your neighbors, but you're telling me that you believe you're going to live forever. But the Bible said, if you love me, obey my commandments. You have a hard time loving a white person or a black person or a green person. You got a hard time loving your baby mama or your baby father because you're not together anymore. You got, a, you got a hard time forgiving your mother, forgiving your father because they, you feel they wronged you. So how are you going to believe you're going to live forever when you're not doing what the word is saying? Come on now. You won't even believe in the part about forgiveness, but you believe that you're going to live forever? But sister, that doesn't make sense. Think about what I'm saying. Kimmy, are you with me, sister? I, 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 I'm, somebody got to be with me. Is anybody with me on what I'm saying? Or is anybody too prideful to admit these things that what I'm speaking is true because it's only God's word? Do you love my father or do you not love him? Because we love you, but do you hate us? Because we're only telling you the truth. We're not here to shame and embarrass anyone. We're here to make sure I will do everything I can to get you into heaven. Everything I can. Only way that, I'll, I'll, only way that that won't be possible if you turn your back on God and on Brother Ronald and you won't answer my calls or fellowship with me, then there's nothing I can do then. If you choose to walk away and say, I'm not talking to that guy no more. I'm not living for Jesus anymore. I'll, I'll try to reach out and call and, and get to you. But if you cut me off and you cut Jesus off, what can I do? As long as your heart is open, I'm, I'm going to fight for you. I don't care what you guys say. I don't care how much pride in you all. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fight for you. You got to cut ties with me in order for me to, 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 to just say, okay, 
they made their choice. But until then, I'm going to soldier on for you. Nothing you can do about it. You can't change the way I love you. I just love you. What are you going to do about it? You can't do anything about it because you can't change the way I feel. This is what's in my heart. You can't change my heart. I want you to hate me, Brother Ronald. No. I'm not going to be the way everyone else was to you as you grew up. I'm not going to treat you wrong the way your mom and dad did you. I'm not going to treat you bad and call you names and pick on you the way other people did. I'm going to love you. That's what you're supposed to experience. If no one else loved you, I'm going to love you. If no one else fight for you and prayed for you, then I'm going to be that person. That's right, because you deserve that. You deserve all of that. That's how much God loves you. That's right. That's why you're still here today, living and breathing. That's right. This is what it's for. That's right. So when I tell you I love you, I'm telling you on the behalf of the Lord, not just Brother Ronald. That's all I'm just trying to tell you, brothers and sisters. How can we believe that we're going to live forever, but we won't believe that he'll never leave us nor forsake us? How can we believe we're going to live forever when we're worrying about food and cars and clothes and jobs? When the Bible says, don't worry about these things. Your father knows what you need. When those things are not coming, are you sure that you're in the father's eyesight? Because the Bible said that the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open to our prayers, right? So why are you starving? Why are you hungry? Why are you jobless? Are you sure you're serving the right God? Listen, I spoke to a brother last night, a brother in, in, in Christ. I'm not going to mention his name. It doesn't matter. God bless him. But I want to share something with you, brothers and sisters, if, if you guys will allow me to. I want to share something with you. Yesterday, I was telling him, I said, brother, and he confessed many things. He said, brother Ronald, he said, I was brought to God religiously. He said, he said, I started learning. They, they made us speak in tongues. He said, brother Ronald, but in the churches I grew up in, you know, everything I learned was traditional and religious. He said, I'm tired. He said, I, I really just want God. He said, I really want, you know, he said, I'm even questioning this and questioning that. So it's just so many things he was telling me. Right. And I was telling him that many people were brought to the lowercase g God of this world and not God almighty, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the God of our forefathers. Many were brought to the false God, the God that lets you still fornicate, let you still lie, let you still hold resentment and bitterness, let you still get angry, let you still lust. The God that people were brought to, they wasn't brought to the God almighty that's in the Bible. So you grow to love what you think God is and who you feel that God is, not the God that's in the word. That's why when you see the word and then he and he told me, he said, he said, brother, I was I was about 10 times. I was going to cut the video off. He said, you know, and, and he said, you know, I didn't I didn't. I didn't it was times I, I didn't want to listen anymore. He said, but after I started getting convicted because the things that you were saying really was speaking to me. I said, brother, let me ask you a question. If I was only speaking the word and I'm only giving you chapter and verse, why would you want to cut it off? You say you've been preaching since you were six years old. He thought about it. That's right. Something's not right here. If I'm only preaching the word and speaking the word, I always give you guys Bible chapter and verse. Why would you not want to listen? So what God are you serving? The God of religion? Or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the father of Jesus, the father of us, is that the God you're serving? Because that God doesn't tolerate sin. He tells you to be perfect as he's perfect, to be holy as he's holy. People always say, oh, holier than thou. That's your excuse to sin. Why would you even want to partake in sin knowing that he died for our sins? Right? So let's go to 1 John 4 and 18. Thank the Lord. It's only 6 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock where you at. So nobody got any excuses to have to leave. We got nothing but time. It's 6 o'clock here. It's 7 o'clock where you at, brothers and sisters. And some of you are in the, mid, in, in, in the West Coast. So it's even earlier there. So there's no excuse. Let's go to 1 John 4 and 18. Remember, before I read these, brothers and sisters, I want you to keep reading the title that I put up here. Right? Remember what I said. Remember what the Father gave me to give you. God bless his word. Remember. How can you believe? The Bible says, if you believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Why is he saying that? Why is it, excuse me, why is it not just saying, 
Now you'll say, well, Acts says, Peter told him in Acts, you believe in God, you'll be, you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Okay, but the Bible's not contradicting itself. Remember, we explained why it's like that. But it says right here, that you believe in thy heart that God raised the dead, thou should be saved. God, remember, this Bible was written, this, these, these, these words were given to those who were dead to the world, who were done, to the, done with the world, and was alive in Christ. It was those who wasn't coming and still living in fear and living in bad habits. It wasn't those who were still living ungodly and living worldly because that contradict God's word. When the Bible says, be unequally yoked with unbelievers. When the Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. When the Bible says to flee useful lust. I mean, to abstain from all appearance of lust, which war against the soul. When the Bible says that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away. So of course he's going to tell you, whoever calls on me. Do you know why he's saying that? Because Paul was writing to the Romans letting them know that the salvation wasn't just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well, and everyone that believes. Even Peter told you, remember when Cornelius got baptized of the Holy Ghost? Remember the Roman soldier um, uh, Cornelius, the centurion that got filled with the Spirit? Remember Peter said, oh, I perceive that God's not a respecter of a person. Whoever does his will, obeys commandments, is whom God receives. So you understand? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's just telling you. That doesn't matter if you're black, white, yellow, or green. As long as you believe in him as your Lord and your Savior, you believe in him, obey him, live for him, do what his words say. Every epistle you have to apply in your life, you will be saved. doesn't matter who you are. Remember who Paul was writing to. This is the Romans. Remember who the Romans were. So Paul was telling them there's neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free that we are all what? One. In Christ Jesus. So whoever Jews, whoever Greek, whoever unbelievers, whoever slaves, whoever call on his name should be saved. That's right. God's not a respecter of a person. There you go. Why did Peter have that vision? Kill Peter, eat. No, Lord, I have never ate anything unclean. He said, Kill, eat, eat. No, Lord, I have never ate anything that's unclean. No, Lord, kill, eat. Don't call unclean what I have made clean. The Bible said Peter thought about this vision. Then he had a knock on the door. Peter, some men are here for you. Okay, here I come. Oh, okay, why are you guys here? And the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter and said, go with them. Don't ask any questions. That's right. <laughs> That's why you see when he was with Cornelius, he said, ah, oh, I perceive that God's not a respect of a person. That's right. Just believe. So you see what Paul was saying in, his, in Romans now? But you guys will look at it and say, well, that should, you know, all we got to do is believe in God and, and we're saved. But what about when the Bible say that if a brother is a fornicator or an extortioner or a drunkard or a reller, it say not to even eat in such one, right? Why would the Bible tell you about false prophets? Test the spirit, make sure, make sure it's of God. Know the truth by the fruit that it bears. Why would, the God say, why would God say such things if all you had to do was just say, okay, I'm a believer, and that's it? No, brothers and sisters. There's much more required to believing in God. If you believe in him, then your life is going to live for him. You're going to serve him. Right now, listen, look what it says. Look what it says. And um, let's see what it says. Um, and I want to look at Corinth. Look at Second Corinth 11 and 4. For if he come and preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Why would they tell us these things? Why would they tell us, listen, if anyone comes preach a different gospel, in that 2 Corinthians 11 and 4, why would they tell us such things like that? You see? Why would Paul say this, why would Paul say this in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3? But I fear lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, that means craftiness, so your mind should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. That's right. You see, brothers and sisters? And look what it says in 1 Corinthians. 5 and 11. 1 Corinthians 5 and 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. Take note. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covenant, that means a lust, or an adulterer, or a reller, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such in one not to eat. You see? Now, why would these, why would these verses be telling us how we're supposed to live our lives? That's right. Why would Paul write this in Titus chapter 1, verse 9? 
Hold him fast in the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able to sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole house teaching things which they ought not for filthy lacrae's sake. That's right. Why would he say that? Why would he tell us these things? First Peter 1 and 14, as obedient children, not fashion yourself according to your former lusts and your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Come on now, because it is written, be ye holy for I'm holy. First Peter 2 and 1, wherefore land aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speakings. Come on now. Second Peter 2, 1 and 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be falsies among you, who will privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many, I say again, many shall follow their pernunctuous ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. What do people say about Brother Ronald's teachings? What do they say? Look what it just say now. People speak evil of things that I speak, and I only speak God's word. Look, I'm giving you Bible chapter and verse, and somebody would still write me a, a negative comment down there at the bottom. But you never see me respond to them because it's not in my nature to wrestle against flesh and blood. As many shall follow their pronunciation ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covenants shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of long time lingereth not in their damnation, slumbereth not. Now, why is this now? Now, why am I reading? OK, before I go to that, Galatians chapter one. I marvel that ye are verse six. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Look what he says. Let me slow down. Galatians chapter one, verse six. I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel but look what he said he put a stop to that which is not another but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of christ verse 8 galatians 1 but though we or angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than what we have preached unto you let him be a curse verse 9 as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you that you have received, let him be a curse. That's right. You see, brothers and sisters? And look what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. That's what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. Spend time with me. Let me pour into you things that God has poured into me. Let me teach you what the scripture means and what it says. At least you know someone that has the Holy Spirit, truthfully. You see the fruits of the Spirit. You see the healing deliverances, all these things that God is doing through me. And I don't ask for money, PayPal's, GoFundMe, sow a seed, none of those things. I just give you the truth because I love you, because God loves you. I'm only, a, I'm an ambassador for him. I speak on his behalf. Second Corinthians 4 and 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Seeing we have this ministry. So this is, come on now. I can keep going. I have so many verses. I have so many verses. What do you guys want me to look at? 2 Timothy 2 and 22. Flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. Why would Paul say that? Take note. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 20. I'm going to give everybody, I know I'm moving fast. I'm trying to encourage you guys to learn the word like that as well. That's right. You see how fast I'm moving. I'm not doing it to discourage you, but to show you, you have to be sound in the word. Because you're going to meet religious folks that's going to come. And they're going to talk real swift and real fast and talk a good game. And they'll overpower your little faith that you have. You got to know where to go in the Bible. You have to know what um, scriptures to stand on when that foolishness comes. You got to be able to answer these questions when people ask you about these things. You got to be able to go to it fast. If you're taking a long time in your Bible to get to where I'm going, you need to learn the Bible better. You're taking too long to get there. You should be able to get there fast. You know where Hebrews is at. You know where Timothy is at. You know where Romans is at, Acts is at. You should know it fluently. You should know it without even looking at it, how to get to the parts in the Bible. If you don't, you're confessing that you don't truly know God's word. If you can't remember where the Bible books are at, where the books are at. Okay, where's, where's Titus? Hold on. Where's Titus? Where's Timothy? Hold on. Hold on. Where, oh, hold on. But Ron, take, you know, as fast as I'm able to go, you should be able to go. 
you should know the word fluently. That's why you don't see no one come up here contesting what I'm saying because I only speak the truth. And they'll get up here and say, oh, but Brother Ronald. I say, oh, no, go to this part of the Bible. Okay, I see that, I see that, I see that. You know, all right. You see? 2 Timothy 2, 22. Flee also useful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Mm. That's it. Why, that, why, why would he write that? Why would he say that? Why does this, now what are we reading right here? Instructions, corrections, teachings, rebukes, right? Now let's go back to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So you believe what they're telling you. All you do is believe in Jesus. That's it. You can still smoke, drink, fornicate, lie. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We're not even supposed to sin as Christians. Let me give you Bible before you can see. Listen, I will never tell you anything that's not in God's word. So you won't be mad at me. You'll be mad at God. But I'd rather you be mad at me than be mad at God. That's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I'd rather you be mad at me than be mad at, than you be mad at God. That's dangerous. But I'm only reading you his word. Look what it says. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. I give you a second. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. Look at what this says. It's going to bless you because your hearts are open. God bless your obedience and your faithfulness to him. He loves you. This is what makes him smile and rejoice. And every man that has this hope, this is 1 John 3 and verse 3. 1 John chapter 3, brothers and sisters, and verse 3. Brothers and sisters, you ready? And every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. Verse 4, 1 John 3. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. How can the Spirit be in you and you're living in sin when there was no sin in him? Wouldn't the Holy Spirit overpower your sinful nature? Wouldn't the Holy Spirit overpower your flesh? Because there's nothing in the spirit to, to sin but to live holy and righteously. So why is your flesh dominating you if you say you have the spirit? Because there's no spirit in there. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth. Righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Verse 8, 1 John 3. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. Now, let's don't listen. Let's, let's not, you might say, well, that's just in 1 John. Okay. Well, remember, John was the one that Jesus loved, right? Let's go to Romans and look at what Paul had to say. Now, this is a, this is a whole other person that became an apostle years later. Remember, he was once that was persecuting the church. He was once that was killing Christians, crucified, you know, um, um, persecuting him, imprisoning him, right? Now, that was John, what we just read about John. We read, we read what Peter wrote. So that those are, those are um, uh, two different men so far. Now, let's look at Paul, who was an apostle. He became an apostle later, but he still spoke the same thing about not sinning. Look when he rebuked all the churches, Galatians, Corinth, you know, Ephesians, just name it. He rebuked them all because of sin. So sin is unacceptable in God's eyes. If you love God, that should agree with you. If you don't love God, then you'll get offended. Well, I, I, 
Why are you loving God? He won't live in sin when he's not a God of sin. You have nothing to do with him. You want to live in, you, you, you're trying to make excuses for sin. He's not a sinful God. So why would you want to vouch for sin when the Lord is sitting there fighting for you that sin won't overthrow you and you're trying to excuse sin because you don't know that it's his grace that's even keeping you alive today, even though you're living in sin because he's waiting for you to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Now, this is the third brother in Christ. We read, we read Peter. We read about Peter. We read, now, this is from, um, we read about John. We read John's epistle. Now, we're reading Paul's epistle. Three brothers in Christ, and their word is in sync. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abound? This is Romans 6. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized in Jesus Christ, were baptized until his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should walk in newness of life. Come on now. Tell him, Paul. For we have been planted together in likeness of his death, we shall be also in likeness of the resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For if he that is dead is freed from sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we shall, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more death, have no more dominion over us, over, over him. For in him he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he, like, he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye Ye yourselves, I mean, ye, your members, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But ye yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that whom ye are your servants, your, I'm, I'm sorry, know ye not that to whom ye are your, yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that deformed doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. You see? So he's letting them know, you guys heard the word. And once you heard it, you cease from sinning. That's right. Those who make excuses of sin are not truly of God. You, if, you, if you sit here and say, well, no one's going to be perfect. Don't you know, if I feel like I even made a mistake, I'm crying my eyes out. I sit there and say, oh, Lord, just forgive me. Some of you will fornicate and say, we can just ask God for forgiveness. But the Bible said we got to all give an account, right? So some of you say, well, you know, God will forgive me. Right. But if the Bible says that God doesn't hear the prayer of sinners, are you sure that he's forgiven you? Now, now, now listen, listen, I'm not trying to, I'm not twisting up scripture here now. The Bible says he doesn't hear the prayer of sinners. So if you're saying, well, God will forgive me, forgive me. Is he forgiving you? How is he forgiving you if he's not even hearing your prayers? Doesn't make any sense. Think about what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. So you that are willfully living in sin, you telling me that God is hearing your prayers when the Bible says he doesn't hear the prayer of sinners. Let me read you the verse. You see? For, so this is what I'm showing you, brothers and sisters. This is what I'm showing you. Let's go to John 9 and 31. Remember, I always give you, I always tell you first, then I back it up with scripture. Go to John 9 and 31. Now we know that, that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he heareth. Now, if you're living in sin, you're telling me, you're repenting and confessing your sins, you're telling me that God is hearing you. Come on, brothers and sisters. I mean, I'm, this John 9 and 31, I'm not making this up. Now, you're saying, well, God, we know, well, God, forgive me for my sins. You're a sinner. 
You're living willfully in sin, committing willfully sins. The Bible said no do good and not do is a sin. So if you're willfully sinning and you're saying, Lord, forgive me. Oh, I'm gonna look at her. Oh, look at her. I'm going to have sex with her. And I'm going to ask God forgiveness. You, you tell me that God is hearing you. It just say on here a prayer of sinners. You're a sinner. You, you've been fornicating. You've been lusting. You've been doing this, doing this, doing this over and over and over. You're a sinner. You're a habitual sinner. Right? You see what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters? I'm only showing you the word. Right? Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians. And let's look at verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no division amongst you, but that ye be perfectly joined together into the same mind and the same judgment. Right? We're not even doing this part. You got Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Apostolic. This is what you believe. You believe this. You believe this. No one is doing what the word says. How are people believing they're going to live forever? You see? This is, this, is, this is the problem, brothers, that we have in this world. This is the problem that we have in this world. Look what Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 4. For while one say, I'm Apollo, I mean, I'm of Paul, another, I'm of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who was Apollos? But ministers of whom you believe, as the Lord gives to every man. Right? So you see that they were sitting there saying, I'm up under this person. I'm up under this person. I'm part of this church. That's why I said whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you're all Christ and Christ is God's. So you see, but brothers and sisters, how are Christians believing they're going to live forever when they won't even, they're part of different groups of, 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 of Christianity as far as denominations? This is not of God. You see, it's much more required in believing in Jesus. You have to believe in his word. It's parts of the Bible that tells you, whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? But he's telling you that anyone can come to him but there's much required. Look what he says. If anyone does not forsake all he has, you know, we be my disciple. If anyone loves their mother or their father, their brother, their sister, their wife, their husband, more than me, what does he say? You know, we're my disciple. So it's not just you believing on him. You got to show your faith. The Bible said man looks in the mirror and turn away and forget who he was. You see? Okay, let's go to, let's go to 1 John 4 and 18. Let's go to 1 John 4 and 18. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Why are you fearing, brothers and sisters? Some of you are afraid of bugs. Some of you are afraid of, of, of animals. Some of you are afraid of, of, of the dark. Some of you are afraid of, of, of people. Some of you are afraid of, I don't know, anything. You're afraid of so much stuff. How are you believing that God rose him from the dead and that he's going to raise you from the dead, but you won't believe what his words say, don't be fearful, but you're still being fearful? How can you believe it takes more faith to believe you're going to live forever than it does to not be fearful? Come on, brothers and sisters. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He has not given a spirit of fear. Why are you fearful? How can you believe that he rose from the dead and you're going to live forever when you won't apply the word about not being fearful? Because you need deliverance. No matter how bold you try to be, you still find yourself being fearful. That's a demon that's doing that. Because if you believe your God and you know that he won't let anything happen to you, then why are you fearful? Because you don't truly believe him. You don't believe his word where it says that I'll protect you. You don't believe where he says, fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I'm your God. You don't believe that, right? You don't believe what Isaiah said. So this is why. How can you believe that you're going to live forever 
The Bible, people say, all you got to do is believe in the name of the Lord and, and you're saved. Whoever called the name of the Lord should be saved. Read the rest of the verse. Do you believe that he died and he rose? If you believe that that power brought back a dead body and gave it life again, then you should believe that when the Bible says not to be fearful, that the same power that brought him back from the dead, Jesus Christ, will be the same power that protect you from the things that you fear. I mean, the things that will be presented as things that make you fear. You wouldn't be fearful. You say, God said, don't be fearful. I can't be fearful. That's right. You don't believe that word. So how do you believe you're going to live forever when you don't even believe not to be fearful? Listen to what I'm saying. It's going to bless you. Many don't live as if they truly believe. Bits and pieces they believe. Let's go to Matthew 20. Matthew 20, verse 18 and 19. Matthew 20, verse 18 and 19. Let's go to Matthew 20, verse 18 and 19. Matthew 20, verse 18 and 19. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. This is what Jesus Christ is saying to the disciples. And they shall deliver him to Gentiles to mock and to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Now you see how bold Jesus Christ was, and he knew that he had to face persecution, and death in Jerusalem. But he was bold. There was no fear in his voice. He wasn't timid. He wasn't afraid. He was strong in faith. How is the Spirit of God living in you, as you claim, but you're afraid of bugs and drinking contaminated water? How are you afraid? How are you believing? How are you saying the Holy Spirit is in you and that you, 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 you're, you're, you're a true child of God? But you're not living like your Lord lived. Remember, he's our example. He's our example. He, he's our teacher, our instructor, our master, our Lord, our Savior. We only can learn and grow from him. But we're not even doing what he did when he faced persecution and faced death. He was bold and strong in faith. Why are we not strong and bold in faith the way he was? Do we truly believe? In his word. Right? Let's go to Matthew 27, verse 41. Matthew 27, verse 41. Matthew 27, verse 41. Like also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, this man called for Elijah. And straight away, one of the men ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, you the ghost. Look at the, the boldness the Lord had. Look how he wasn't crying. Look how he wasn't, wasn't worried or he wasn't fearful. He willfully let them take him. But you're afraid of the smallest things in this life. But you believe that you're going to live forever. Do you truly believe that? Because you guys are trying to get rich, trying to start businesses. You're trying to live so much in pleasure in this world. You're trying to live so much in pleasure in this world. Do you truly believe that you're going to live in heaven? Why are you trying to do so much in this life? And you believe that you're going to live forever in heaven, in paradise. You got a mansion waiting for you. We're trying to get a mansion while you're here. You're trying, you, you got blessings and things in heaven that's going to be there for you. But you're trying to live, leave a legacy here that you're not even going to remember about once you're gone. Why are you working so hard? 
two jobs, three jobs, four jobs. Why are you trying to make so much money? Why is an apartment not good enough for you? Why is a Honda or a Toyota not good enough for you? Why does it have to be this car, that car, expensive car? You got to put 93 in your gas tank. Why? Why has it got to be the expensive pocketbooks and expensive shoes? Why can't it be the inexpensive? They got pocketbooks that you can get from stores that's made from the same material that's made in Louis Vuitton or, or Gucci or Prada. The only thing that sells is the, is the label that's on it. Tell me would a Reebok not last as long as a Jordan? Tell me would a Saucony not last as long as um, 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 some, some uh, foam posites or something like that, some LeBrons? What's the difference? What difference in the Kyrie's, the Kevin Durant's, the Michael Jordan's, and LeBron's? They're all basketball shoes. It's the name that's on it. That's it. Don't conform to the world. Be transformed by renewing your mind. That's right. You're on Black Friday. Many of you are going to be waiting outside of stores for Jordans, for shoes, for clothes, for, for laptops, for TVs. First, is get you a regular laptop. Get your regular TV. They don't even sell the, back, the big back TVs anymore. You can get a flat screen for $50, $40, but you want to have the one you can put on the wall that's 80 inches, 100 inches. And you stressed out hoping that it won't fall. You stressed out when the children, you're pressing the buttons too hard. You buy stuff and give yourself anxiety. You buy, you buy stuff and make Satan tempt you. I got to be careful with this. You buy a car, you watching that car every day. You watch that car, won't even read your Bible and pray. You get a job, you say, God bless with that job. But you're not even spending time reading your Bible and praying. And But God gave you that job, you're not even thankful. You're as worse as the, as, as the nine lepers that got healed and only one came back and gave God the glory. You tell me God gave you that job and it naturally took you away from worshiping, from praying, from reading. God gave you that job. God gave you that house that you're stressing out trying to make the mortgage. God gave you that car and you can barely make the car note. Come on, brothers and sisters. Why you go get the iPhone 10, a hundred, a thousand dollar phone, the screen crack, it costs you 500 to get fixed. What's wrong with an iPhone 7, a 6 plus or an 8? Some people still got, some of those phones aren't compatible when they do the little upgrades. So I understand, you know, six, seven, eight, they're still compatible. What's the difference? It takes pictures, it makes phone calls, it sends text messages. What else you need? You go on Google, any phone can do that. That has a good processor. Brothers and sisters, what's the difference? Whether you got a MacBook or a Dell or a Windows, what's the difference? It's what the world tells you should have because it makes you feel like you have status. I gotta get me a Michael Kors. Look, they make, they make pocketbooks for people that's not that wealthy and they make things for people that are wealthy. The middle class, they get Michael Kors, right? Chanel, Chanel was kind of out the date, so everybody gets Michael Kors now, right? Or you might got one Louis Vuitton you paid $6,000 for, but your car is a car that's not even an expensive car. Your, your bag costs more than your car. Your bag is, is more than your rent and your everything. I'm telling you, and it's going to get messed up with your makeup and all the type of stuff that's in the inside. This is the world. How can you believe that you're going to live forever, but you're living like the world? You, you will not make it into glory. I'm trying to keep up with the rest of the world. That's the world. That's the world. That's not of God. You see? People say, oh, you got you to have a 401k plan. You need life insurance. What do you need life insurance for? What do you need medical insurance for? Ask Brother Ronald when the last time he went to the hospital. I can't tell you. Before I got delivered, before I was filled with the spirit, I'm not going to the hospital and doctor for headaches and colds and, and different things. When have you ever seen Brother Ronald? You've seen me sick. I've been doing videos for the last couple of years. I do videos almost every other day. When have you seen me down, sick, depressed, in pain, fatigue, oh, this is a bad day? The spirit lives in me. In the same way that Jesus Christ is the same, yesterday, today, and forever, that's how I am. I'm the same. Yesterday, today, and I'll be the same tomorrow. Because it's no longer me that live, but Christ that lives in me. The secret of salvation is Christ wants to be himself in you. That's it. Okay, let's move on.
Okay, we'll, 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 we'll go past that. Let's go to Acts 7 and um, 59. Acts chapter 7, verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord, Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. But look what Stephen did. He really did what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Stephen was being stoned. This is Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Acts 7, verse 59. Stephen was being stoned. The Lord was being crucified. You see the same personality because Stephen had the Holy Spirit. The same way Jesus Christ had the Holy Spirit. So you see the behaviors were the same. Stephen wasn't crying out, God's going to get you. You don't know who you're messing with. I'm a child of God. God's going to smite you. He's going to kill you. Right? He simply said, forgive them, Lord, and receive my spirit, and fell asleep. He died. But you're afraid of your neighbors. You're afraid of people at the store. You won't even go to the, you won't even go to the corner store because you say it's thugs hanging out there late at night. The Bible says that we have authority over darkness. Luke 10 and 19. So why are you afraid of the darkness in them if you believe you have authority over it? Because you don't believe that. That's right. That's why you're afraid to be at home by yourself. You're afraid to, you know, to, to, to walk to your house or you live in a, a parking garage. You're nervous. Every day you go home, you've been living in that apartment or that, that town home for two years and you got to park in the parking deck and it's late when you get off. Every time you get home, you look around the corner. That, that spirit of fear inside of you is tormenting you. You look around the corner. You always think you're going to see something that's never there. And you be thinking you're seeing something that's not even there. You'll walk around your house and you'll be the only one there. The lights will be off. You come out the room, look, 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 look towards the living room as you go to the bathroom. You wake up, say you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning all the lights are off. You come out, you come out the, the room, you hurry up and the light switch. Try to cut the light on because you're afraid of the dark. Come on, brothers and sisters. How are you going to believe you're going to live forever when you have fear in you? That's not of God. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. Look what Peter said. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. You see how bold Peter was? He knew that it was his time of departure was at hand, but he wasn't afraid. He, was, he wasn't afraid because he hasn't given, has given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. Without that spirit, you're going to be fearful because you don't have anything in you that's making you be bold. The words that you read in the Bible are not enough for you. You need the Holy Ghost in order to be strong in faith. Look at, what second, look at what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 and 6. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. This is the Apostle Paul. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, at that day. And unto and not and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. You can't be you can't love God's appearing when you love this world. And you got you got a bucket list. You want to go to every country. You want to travel the globe. You want to buy this, you want to buy that. You got dreams, I want to buy a house. I just want to do that. You should only want what God wants for you. The Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and the light of in his way. You should only want what God wants. Maybe God don't want you to live in that state. Maybe God don't want you to buy this house. Maybe God knows if you get this house, you get this car, you get this job, your devotion will stop. Maybe God's trying to tell you that if you go this direction, you're going to abandon him. And you'll never recover from that mistake. Maybe he knows that. Of course he knows that. But maybe you don't know that. Right? Let him order your steps. Whatever God has for you, it will come to pass. He don't need your help. If God wants someone to bless you financially, you don't have to make a post on Facebook. If God wants someone to bless you with food, you don't have to advertise that you, that you need food. You don't got to do a GoFundMe or a PayPal. 
Every, all these Christian men get up here and say, God gave me a vision. I need $300,000 to start my church. Why are you asking people? If God gave it to you, why can't he see it to pass? God blessed everyone. God told Solomon, because you didn't ask for, for money or anything else, he said, not only am I going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to bless you financially. God did that. He sure did. Job was blessed by God. You heard what um, Satan said in Job chapter 1. He said, haven't you blessed his hands and made him to prosper? God made them animals to reproduce so much that it was so many animals Job had. That's right, because God graces over it. Every time them, them animals um, um, went in to mate, they reproduced, 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 reproduced. God sent people to Job's house to work for him, to help, um, um, you know, attend to all the animals. God made those animals reproduce, reproduce, and he made them healthy. There was no stillbirths. There was no animals that was dying when it was being born. God blessed everything that Job did. So his animals were, were being, they were having um, babies, and they were having multiple babies, not just three or two camels coming out. It was six camels coming out of one camel, um, um, little camels. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, we only can have one, but I'm just saying, like a sheep or something, you no know, animals that have multiple um, animals. God was blessing the, the fruit of the, the womb of the animal, where multiple animals were coming out. This is how he was able to have so many animals over his lifetime. That's right. God did that. He made his servants not to steal from him, to be faithful, to work hard. He touched their hearts. That's right. God didn't allow the demons to affect Job's wife. Even though she wasn't a, a, a solid believer, that's why you see when the grace got removed, she started saying, curse your God and die. That's right. But before, demons wasn't able to touch her because she was under the grace that was, the grace that was over Job. Job's grace protected everybody else that was with him. That's what God would do. That's why Jacob told uh, Leah, um, um, father, told Leah and um, 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 Rachel, father, that the reason your house is blessed is because of me. And remember Joshua, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Joseph. Remember the Bible said that the hand of God was with him. Everything that he did, he, he prospered and it was blessed. That was the grace that was over Joseph. So it made the, the Egyptian captain house be blessed as well. Like you just, they'll plant seeds, but the seeds will, will plant up. I mean, they'll, they'll sprout a hundredfold, more than usual. They'll have animals. The animals will reproduce. And it won't, they won't have any stillbirths. They will be birthing out multiple little sheeps and everything. That's right. Reproducing because the hand of God was over these people. That's how you, Job and him was able to increase. So God will do that. God will be raising up a man of God. And it's, at the same time, he's raising up somebody that's financially that will bless that man of God. The man of God won't even know that that blessing is coming. But God will give that person a dream, a vision, anything. Some across their videos, some across their posts. And God would get that person that's rich or wealthy to bless the, um, the, 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 the man of God. The man of God won't even know. And you won't even know when the blessing comes to the man of God. He won't never advertise it. That's right. That's Jesus for you. You see? Think about when Jesus Christ was born. Who came to bless him? The wise men. Why? Because the journey that was ahead. That they had to get a house in Egypt. They had to get food. They had to take care of Mary himself, Joseph, he had to take care of Jesus. That's right. So God brought finances to sustain him for the journey ahead. That's right. See, look at Luke 9 and 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever will lose his life for my sake shall save it. You see? So Stephen did what the word say, and Jesus Christ did as well. You see? So how can you believe that you're going to live forever? How can you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? But you won't believe that you're not supposed to be fearful. You're supposed to trust God. You get up at the middle of the night and the house is dark. You're afraid. You think you're seeing stuff. You, you're looking through the corner. You, you look in the living room. Think you're going to see something. Or you're going to cut the light on real quick. Because you feel like as long as the light is on, nothing bad is going to happen. That's fear. Okay, let's look at Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against power, I mean, against principalities, against powers, against rules of the darkness of this world, against, against spiritual witnesses in high places. So if the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, why are you afraid? How are you believing that the same power that resurrected Jesus Christ will resurrect you? But you're not even doing what the Bible say about being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You live in fear of everything. Fear of, of water that's not coming in bottled water. Uh, fear of drinking faucet water. Fear of eating two, three-day-old food. Sometimes we got left over for three. When we, when we were in that homeless season, me and Courtney was in that homeless season. We were living in our car. We didn't have no refrigerator. So when we went to Dollar Tree, Dollar, we, we learned how to live in Dollar Tree. I'm telling you, even to this day, we shop in Dollar Tree. It saves you so much money. We, we, we was going buying a, a pound of rice. They sell like five chicken patties already cooked in the frozen section in Dollar Tree. We'll get a loaf of bread. We'll get some barbecue chips. And um, like for a snack, sometimes having balance, we'll get like a, a, the thing of fudge stripe cookies. That was it. So we'll, 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 and we'll get ramen noodles out of Walmart. It was like 25 cent. So I'll, I'll go to Walmart too. So we had two bowls, two Tupperware container bowls. And we'll, we'll make the rice. We'll make the ramen noodles. We'll mix it all together, put some ranch in there to add moisture. You know, chop up the little chicken patties, the little bread ones from Dollar Tree. We'll put it in there. You know, we'll, sometime we'll, I showed Courtney, I was in prison, so I learned a lot of stuff in prison. I crushed some of the chips up and put it in top to get like a, like a barbecue taste to it. Courtney liked that too while we was in the homeless season. And, um, you know, we'll get full, eating, you know, putting on bread with mayonnaise. You know, we'll get full. So we'll have like a half a bowl left. You know, we don't got no refrigerator. We're living in the car. So we'll just put it, you know, it was, it was cold at, at, um, and, um, towards, the, towards the end of uh, our season. It was cold. So we'll put the, the, the food, you know, on the floor. And, you know, we'll go to sleep and stuff or we'll put it in the trunk. And it'll stay cool. You know, when we get hungry, we'll just drive to like a little um, gas station, use their microwave. We always went to the, the uh, Courtney could tell you better. Um, I think it was the, the Sitgo or the Shell. I can't remember. But we'll always go to the gas station and warm it up and just eat it. We get full, we just put it back on the floor in the car. You know, it, it'll stay cool. We had so many blankets and stuff, so we'll stay warm. That's what we did. And that's how we survived. But anybody else tell you, three day old food, four day old food, that food, sometime, like one time we got blessed from people that, um, just at Shoney's, they'll throw the food away and they'll give it to us. God did that. Bags and bags of fried chicken, bags and bags of baked potatoes. You know, this is a, this is a buffet. So we, I mean, we had bags of okra, bags of fried catfish. So we'll go to Captain D's, get vinegar, get a uh, uh, cocktail sauce, tartar sauce. You know, we'll go to, um, you know, McDonald's and get barbecue sauce, ranch, you know, I mean, whatever we need it. Then the stores, they'll bless us, giving us free drinks and stuff. You know, we've been talking about God and stuff. And, you know, every time they want to come to Jesus and stuff like that. So God was touching these people's hearts. And, you know, many didn't even know what we were going through, you know. And some did, and they'll always be like, go to the Salvation Army. But we, they knew. After, like, a couple months, they knew, like, we're not going to persuade them. You know, they're really just soldiering on and trusting in God. So we'll go there and use their microwave. We'll have all this food. We'll be giving the food away. One time, they was giving away all the Subway bread. And they gave us, like, a garbage bag full of Subway bread. I, I mean, Italian herbs and cheese, regular wheat, you know, everything. I mean, we had so much bread. <laughs> you know, it, the bread got... Uh, stale after a while. It was so much bread. We, we, I mean, you got a trash bag full of bread, you know, so that was Jesus for you. So all I'm trying to show you is that, you know, you know, people will tell you, oh, you can't eat food after a certain amount of days or you can't do something. that. Brothers and sisters, listen, they'll tell you that you can't have a baby in a homeless season. We did. Look at Noah today. Everyone tell you, everyone that met Noah knows that baby is the most healthiest and most smartest baby. No, no birth defects. Courtney never had no medical treatment. She, Courtney didn't go to the hospital until she was eight months when she had Noah. That was her first time going. I'm just telling you. Y'all don't see us going to doctor's appointments now like that. You see? Faith. God got that baby healthy. Man can't make a baby healthy. It don't even come from man. How can man make it healthy? How can he make it healthy? I'm telling you. This is Jesus. But people will tell you, oh, don't, you know, don't let that, don't let that fool sit out. Brothers and sisters, as long as it's not hot. And, and, and the food is not retaining moisture to where bacteria can grow inside of it. You'll be fine. 
as long as it doesn't smell bad, you know, I mean, sometimes stuff got bad, it got spoiled, we just threw it away, you know, we're not going to eat spoiled food, that's foolishness, I'm telling you when the food is, is kept, you know, cool and, you know, it's not spoiled, we ate for two or three days off that food, I'm telling you, even that food from Shoney's, and that food, and they even tell you, you know, you got to refrigerate food after it gets cooked, you know, but brothers and sisters, we didn't have a refrigerator, we, we say our grace, we bless that food, and we never got sick, never. Got sick. That's Jesus for you. You see? I drink fossil water everywhere I go. You know what's so funny? I go to different states and I I I'll like I'll I'll taste the tap water. They all taste different. It's so funny. Like some 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 water make your throat itch a little bit, you know. And I always laugh and I say, every state I go to, the water tastes different. Sometimes it's like more sweeter, sometimes it's more bitter, but it, I mean it's water, it's just to hydrate me. You know, God commanded me to drink a gallon of water a day. So I gotta do as I'm told. You know, so I drink more water than I eat. So everywhere I go, I, I taste people's water, not purposely, but, you know, I, I got to have water. So, you know, I'm always praying for people, people getting delivered. You know, it's a lot. So I got to stay hydrated and I go and taste water. And some places the water tastes really funny. <laughs> you know, it tastes funny. It tastes at, at the tap. It tastes funny. But, you know, water is water. You say your blessings over it. You know, you should, you should don't just bless your, look, I'm going to give you wisdom. So why a lot of you get sick. Don't just bless your, your food. Bless what you, you drink as well. I don't care what it, if it's juice, if it's water, if it's soda. Say your grace over it. doesn't matter what it is. You, you give thanks for the water and for food, for juice, for soda, everything. You bless the water and the food. You protect it. You cover that water, that food. I'm telling you, keep not praying over, over liquids. This is why you get sick. Find yourself getting diarrhea, running to the bathroom. I'm telling you, you don't know what's in some of that stuff. Doesn't matter what's in it. Long as you have faith and, and you believe what's ever in it, <laughs> it's going to evaporate. I'm telling you, Lord Jesus, thank you for this water I'm about to receive. Thank you for letting me have the best of water. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. I don't care if there's little things in there swimming around. <laughs> Courtney, I had, a I had a bottle that I had when I went to Virginia. I think Courtney said I went to Virginia like in August or something. And she told me that my bottle was getting brown. And, and you know, my top had cracked. And you know, she said the bottle was turning brown. She's like, just get your new bottle. I'm like, you know, it, you know, it, Courtney had me laughing. I'm like, it's just water, <laughs> you know. I just put water in it. You know, I wash my top a little bit sometimes when it starts smelling funny, you know, but I drink it. I'm just content. But I had to get rid of it the other day because the top ended up cracked and it was like leaking for like, I, like, like if I fill it up with water, it'll leak a little bit and some of the water will be rushing out. So I had to, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to finally, I'm going to finally get me a new bottle. But after like four months, I just had that same bottle. You know, just content. You know, I mean, it's water. I, I don't care. Courtney, like, <laughs> Courtney said, your bottle was brown. You know, I'm a, I, <laughs> she is funny. But, you know, my grace, but is, I don't, you know, it's a plastic. It starts to, you know, plastic starts, you know, uh, having stuff that go inside of it. You know, I don't care about that. But since I'm just being honest, once you say your prayers over it, that water is blessed. That water tastes like, <laughs> I don't know what you guys are drinking, um, smart water, uh, Evian, 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 or whatever that stuff is called. That, my water is just the same. I had drunk some bottled water the other day when I got a new bottle. I got me a new Aquafina bottle. So praise God, I got me a new Aquafina bottle. I was drinking, I'm like, this water tastes funny. <laughs> I had to drink in tap water so long. Bottled water don't even taste good. I'm telling you, it tastes like they put like some stuff in it. Like it tasted like it tasted like it had medicine in it. And Courtney was like, you know, you know they put minerals in it and put stuff. I was like, I'd rather drink the, the regular stuff that's coming out of the ground where it's coming from from God. All the other stuff tastes funny, man. I was drinking alcohol. I was like, this this water tastes funny, <laughs> you know. But that's all. I just I, you know, I, I drink tap water, so it, you know, the bottled water is gonna taste funny. But I just wanted to share that, though, because you got to know that it's a time to laugh and it's a time to cry. It's a time to rejoice. So, you know, uh, you know, I just want to let you know where my heart is at in Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversations be without covetousness. That's meaning to, want to, uh, um, to, to obtain material riches or be materialistic and be content with such things. As ye have, for he has said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Now, now you believe that Jesus Christ died and he rose and that you're going to live forever, right? But Hebrews 13 and 5, you don't do. The Bible says, let your conversation be without covenants. But many talk about what they want and what they want to have. 
And it say, be content with such things as ye have. But many are not content. So how can you not do what this say? But you're supposed to believe that you're going to live forever. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, brothers and sisters. You see? That's what I'm trying to say. You can't believe in one part of the Bible, not believe in the other part. You can't have, you can't have faith in one area and not have faith in another area. If you don't got faith in one area, you don't have faith in another area. You're just, you're just deceiving yourself. If he say don't be fearful and he say walk in compassion, you can't walk in compassion and then be fearful. You can't, there's no way. You only could be one way. The Bible says you can't be double-minded. The Bible says the double-minded man is stable in all his ways, right? So you have to have compassion and not be fearful to truly say I have compassion and I, I'm not fearful. You can't say I'm not fearful, but you lack compassion. You can't say I'm not angry, but then you're walking in lust. That's not faith. That's what I'm trying to show you. Philippians 4 and 10. Philippians 4 and 10. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last, that now at the last your care of me has flourished again. When you were also careful, but you lack opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be a base and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which sent to me. Now, if you truly believe that you're going to live forever and you believe Jesus Christ died and he rose and the same power going to resurrect you, why are you not believing in Philippians 4 and 10 to verse 4 to 15? Where Paul said that he was instructed, he was instructed right to be full and to be hungry to abound and to suffer need now if he had to go through it what makes you think that you're any better when god in respect of a person now did not go through what paul went through without even knowing that i was going through what paul went through i went through the same thing we went times that we were hungry we went times that we we we, we suffered i mean um times that um that we that we abounded in a homeless season there's times that we didn't abound it was times that big blessings came, and it was sometimes that a day or a week went by, there was no blessings that came, and we were just making it barely off. I remember one time we, were, we had to find, I, went, I remember Courtney was pregnant, I had to walk around, and I was finding change on the ground. But you would have known I was looking for change. You know, I wasn't looking homeless. And, you know, the way I look today is the way I look then. You know, I had clothes from, my, from, my, you know, from before I went to the season. So, you know, I had shoes and clothes and, you know, nice things. But, um... I, I was looking for change, and I, all I was able to find was enough to buy a pack of noodles. I think two pack of noodles, and that's all we had. But I was looking, 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 and I found like I think like fifty cent. I was able to buy two packs of noodles, right? So we get the noodles, then we get blessed later on that night with some food out of nowhere. We were I think one time we were sitting in Popeyes using the Wi-Fi, and Courtney was studying, I was studying, and um, I was reading as well. I mean, I was studying, I was reading, she was studying, she was reading, and um, I went to the bathroom. And as I was coming out the bathroom, you know, I was always praying and praying and praying, just asking God, you know, to like, just, you know, we trust you. You know, I know you're going to bless us, Father God. So this older lady, older lady, she walk up to Courtney and say, baby, buy you something to eat. Now, brothers and sisters, we didn't look like we were hungry. Remember, you guys can go back and look at the videos from last year, 2017, our homeless season. When we was homeless, that we started being homeless in November of 2016 to, um, I don't know, sometime this year, uh, December of last year. I can't, I can't remember, or January this year. But we were homeless that whole last year. So you go look at any pictures, any videos, any posts from last year, we were homeless. Tell me that I looked like I was homeless. Tell me that I ever asked for a GoFundMe or a PayPal. All you guys that's up here now have been my friends even at that time. Brother Justin that's up here right now, I keep seeing his face pop up when he likes something. I might see his little, his little um, Lakers picture pop up. He knew that we were homeless. Ask him. Ask him that we asked him anything. That brother had a good paying job. He worked at a factory job. He had a nice house and everything. Ask him that we ever beg or ask him for anything. That's right. See what I'm trying to show you, brothers and sisters? I won't tell you no lie. People can vouch for these stories. So you have to believe. I, went, I couldn't look at my life any differently. Ask Brother Keith, or Brother Kelgen. They knew us in that homeless season. Ask them that I ever asked for anything. They'll tell you. They'll, they'll, tell you. they'll, they'll comment up here and tell you the truth. We don't have to lie. What are we, what are we lying for? I, I, I never asked for anything. God provided. 
So how can you believe that you're going to live forever when you won't even believe his word? Paul said that he, that he was instructed to be hungry and to be full, to abound and to be abased. That's right. So why is you not finding comfort in the word, but you say you believe that you're going to live forever, that you believe, if I call him the Lord, I should be saved. But you're not doing what the word says. There's much more required to that verse than that. Okay, Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6. Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. That's right. So you believe that you're going to live forever. And you believe Jesus Christ died and he rose, right? And you believe the same power, resurrect God, I mean, resurrect Jesus Christ will resurrect you. But you're anxious all the time and you're worried. You're always worried. Your mind's always racing. You're always trying to figure out things. You don't have no peace. How do you believe? How do you believe that, that the power of resurrect res res Jesus Christ will resurrect you when you won't even believe his word where it says not to be worried, but you're worried? What's going to happen when it's time for you to get ready to die? You get old or you get sick or whatever the case may be. What's going to happen when you get ready to die? You're going to be afraid. I don't want to die. Please, if, if, if I die, um, resuscitate me. You know, shock my heart to so I can come back to life. If I die, please don't, don't do no um, CPR. Don't use any of them electrical things. They, one, two, three, clear it. You know, don't shock Brother Ronald. I'm going to come back. I'm going to say, brother, sister, no. <laughs> I'm going. I have kept the faith. I fought the fight. I stayed the course. I, I'm not trying to come back here. You, I, I can imagine how Lazarus was. Lazarus was up there in glory with God, singing in a heavenly choir. Singing in the heavenly. He was up there worshiping God. Then the Lord bring him back. Lazarus like, Lord, you brought me back? <laughs> what, you, what you bring me back for? I was done with this world. I was done with temptation, done with persecution, done with name calling, done with hatred, done with violence, done with um, provokes and, 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 and the evil. I was in paradise. Lord, you brought me back. <laughs> Lazarus. Right, poor Jesus to the side. Like, Lord, you know, what was that about? <laughs> you know, I was in glory. You know, so that's all. But I mean, it, you know, it's funny, brothers and sisters. But how we believe in Jesus, but we don't believe, how we believe in that we're going to live forever and believe in that he died and he rose. But we won't believe in the power that's in these words. Come on. Matthew 6 and 24. Courtney made this, um, this little ponytail tight back here. I told her she's strong when she be doing here. I don't think she be knowing how strong she is. That's why you see I don't get no braids anymore. Courtney don't know. Courtney don't don't know how to uh, do, do them without so, being so tight. She'll Courtney be, she'll give me a headache now. Matthew six twenty four. No man can serve two masters, but either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for the body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feed them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cupid unto a statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lives of the field, how they grow, they toil, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that, the, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye little of faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or where will shall we be clothed? Verse 32, verse 32 Mark, um, Matthew 6. For after all these things do the Gentiles, unbelievers, seek. For your heavenly Father know that ye have need of all these things. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the, for, for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. 
sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Brothers and sisters, you agree with me. Many are worried about their kids' school clothes and what they're going to buy for Christmas and all this stuff. You are disobeying God's word. That stuff does not matter. Why do you have to buy them gifts on one day? Why? You're keeping tradition of men. Buy, if they need a jacket, buy them a jacket. They need a clothes, buy them clothes. They need shoes, buy them shoes. Why do you have to be that one day to wrap up gifts? You should do these things every day for your children if you can with balance. Them children won't have stuff you buy them. It's going to get messed up anyway. Then you'd be angry at them. You'd be tempting Satan to tempt you. You go out and do all this stuff, shopping 3 to 4 o'clock in the morning in the blistering cold because you want your kids to have the best Christmas. You done got yourself a cold. Now you let, you let a spirit of sickness in. You let a spirit of anxiety in, a spirit of frustration in. Just because you're doing all this stuff, keeping with tradition of men. Why, why, if, if you truly raise your children up in the, in the Lord, they're not going to care whether they get gifts on that day or not. They're not going to care. They only care because you allow them to care about those things. They only want them because you allow them to want those things. You raise them that way. You raise them. Look what happened with Isaac and, um, and, and Abraham. Abraham asked, Isaac asked his dad, he said, Dad, what's the sacrifice? He said, God will provide. You didn't hear Isaac say, what do you mean God will provide? Why is it just me and you walking? Why is it just, why is it just that? He was obedient to his father's voice. And it goes to show that he was brought up in the Lord because he knew that they supposed to have made a sacrifice. That's why Isaac, little Isaac asked Abraham, what's a sacrifice? And, and Abraham said, God will provide it, right? So you see, Isaac wasn't even questioning his dad. Dad, what do you mean? Wait, hold on, hold on. Some of your kids are too grown because you allowed them to be. They see your behavior. That's behavior that's been taught by demons. They're too grown. They worry about too many things. That's, that's, of, that's of adults. They need to stay children and, and enjoy their childhood. It's not their time to act as adults. You tell your kids too much. You're too close to your kids. Your kids think you guys are best friends, not your mother and your father. You look at your children look at you as your best friend instead of being your mo their mother. That's why when, you, when they get mad, you, know, you start feeling sad. The Bible says if you, you spare the rod, you hate your son. That's right. So you're scared to discipline them because you don't want them to be mad at you. What do you mean, brothers and sisters? Don't let Satan deceive you because the way you and your mom grew up, you don't want that to be the same way. It's going to be the same way without you implying God's word. Come on, brothers and sisters. Your mom bought you stuff. Your mom gave you a roof and clothing and shelter. And look at your relationship now. Still rocky. Because guess what? Your mom didn't raise you up in the Lord. There you go. Bingo. See? Jesus loves you. Okay. Luke 12 and 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure that, that, to give you the kingdom. Fear not, little flock. <laughs> little flock. You guys are the little flocks. I'm the little flock. Fear not. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What are you fearful of? What are you fearful of? The kingdom of heaven is at your grasp. All you got to do is what he commands you to do and be obedient to this word, not to sin, to repent, to live holy, righteous, and godly. And to do what this word say. That's all you have to do. Live like Jesus. And you'll have an entrance into the kingdom. That's right. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And he's a warrior of them that didn't seek him. That's right. You got to believe. Look at Luke 10 and 19. I know I said it about twice earlier. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see? So then why are we afraid of people? Oh, I don't like my neighbors. I don't, I don't like my job. You know, people at my job be acting crazy. Or, you know, I, it's these little kids at my job, they really unruly. You know, I had to bring my taser to work one day. Taser? The Bible says that we're supposed to live at peace. We're supposed to be gentle. We're going to taser somebody? We can possibly make their heart stop? Come on, brothers, now you're charged with murder. Trust Jesus. Ask for his angels to be with you at that job. To destroy every spirit of darkness that can try to provoke you or to tempt you. Where's your prayer? Where's your faith? You're afraid. How are you going to believe? You believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Tell the truth. You really believe he rose from the dead, but you won't believe the word we tell you not to be fearful. He tell you that you have authority over darkness. He said he has given you power to tread upon serpents of all the power of the enemy. 
Some of you know that you don't have that authority. But you need deliverance. You don't have the Holy Spirit. This is why you have to humble yourself and know that you're not as spiritual as you think you are. Because you'll meet someone that's truly spiritual and you'll feel intimidated. You shouldn't feel intimidated. You should know that you're not who you think you are. You'll meet someone that's truly spiritual and you will see that this life is really what you thought it wasn't. But you'll still be intrigued because your heart is for God. But you'll be intimidated. You shouldn't be intimidated. That's pride. You shouldn't have pride. Oh, I don't want Brother Ronald. You know, I'll, listen, some of you think I don't know what you're doing. I know. Some of you think I don't know what's going on behind closed doors because you might not call me or text me. I know. Some of you think that I, I don't see the things. I see. Don't let the humility and the love fool you. I post the love you and have compassion. What I'm going to do, if you, if you willfully want to do those things, what I'm going to say and do. I've been telling you over and over and over not to do these things. I post verses. I'm not posting a verses just to post them. I'm posting because God tell me to post them. And then you'll happen to see it. It was for you. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm not, I don't, I'm not led by myself. I'm led by the Spirit of God. I only do what he tells me. You think I'm just posting verses. Tell me whenever you guys talk to me personally. Anyone that knows personally, tell me when you ever talk to me. I just talk about loose things. I talk about the things of God and the things of the Spirit. So you know when I post scripture, I'm not just posting scripture. That just coming to that, that I'm just thinking about posting. I'm doing as He tells me to do, and then you're the one that read it because you know it was for you. You do it all the time. <sighs> okay, Luke twelve and thirteen. Luke twelve and thirteen. I want everybody to look at this one. And we only, we only got uh, two more verses left. We made it, but since it's two hours and six minutes, praise the Lord. Two verses, two verses left, and we're done. <laughs> So that's all the Lord gave me, unless he gives me something else when I get to the end. You know, he does it, he wills. I must my job is to be obedient. Luke 12 and 13. And one of, the, one of the company said unto him, Master, talking about Jesus, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Jesus said, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Verse 15, Luke 12. And he said unto them, take heed. And be aware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. That's right. You see? Read Luke 12, verse 13 to verse 15. You see? So you believe that Christ rose from the dead. You believe that God power rose him. You believe that he's going to raise you from the dead. But you're so concerned about material riches. You're so concerned about the job and the money and I got to be a good provider for my household. But you, 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 you neglect what the Bible tells you to do. So you have been deceived by man telling you that all you can do is get into heaven by doing this and doing that. And all you do is believe in Jesus and, and you're all good. None of you read your Bible. None of you truly pray. None of you truly study. None of you truly, none, none of you truly meditate on the word of God. You just get deceived. This is why when you see these scriptures, you're like, what in the world? <laughs> this is why we're here to help you because we love you. That's all. It's not to shame anyone, but to help you and to love you and to strengthen you. That's all. Nothing to, to, to shame anybody. Nothing shames Jesus. No, no, no situation embarrasses him. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Matthew 10 and verse 1. And when he called unto his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now, remember, all scripture was given by all scripture was given by inspiration of God, right? So why when your children get sick, your wife gets sick, husband gets sick, you get sick, anybody gets sick, you go run to the doctors. Why do you go to Google to figure out what's wrong with you? Google, my, my ear is clogged up and I and I got pressure on the left side of my head. Okay. This means that you might be experiencing what you call a tumor. Oh my God, get the kids, get the keys. I'm going to mercy room. I got a tumor. Oh, doctor, doctor, give me an EKG. I need a CAT scan. You let fear all in you. Come on, brothers and sisters. I don't care what's in me. Lord, <laughs> that's it. I got his personal number. Lord, this is going on. And he, take, he does it. He does it. That's Jesus for you. Well, how can you say you believe that you're going to live forever? But you won't even believe that we have authority over sicknesses and diseases. But you run to man to, 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 to help you and not Jesus. See? Isaiah 41 and 10. 
Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will hold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Right? You see? So why do we fear? If we believe in his word, why do we fear drinking tap water? Why do we fear, oh, that food, I don't eat leftovers. I don't eat leftovers. That's, that's, how, that's how rich folks live. People that, 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 that have these standards. Well, bring the leftovers to me. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. You made some spaghetti, you made some, I, I baked spaghetti, some Alfredo, or, or you know, whatever you made. Bring it over here to me. I'll take it. I'm not too good to eat leftovers. I'm going to humble myself. The Lord even took up the scraps after he fed them with fish and bread. Read the Bible. After he fed them, he took up the, he took up the scraps, the broken pieces of fish and bread. That's right. You, you don't, we don't waste nothing over here. You know, so you don't, you don't want it. I'm in Huntsville, Alabama. Bring it to me. I'll eat it. Send it in the mail. You know, put it on ice. You know, don't waste it. I'll eat it, brothers and sisters. That's right. I don't got to go spend no money. That you, You're helping me. <laughs> you know, God is good. Okay, it's the last one the Lord gave me. I told you. The Lord is my shepherd. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff come for me. Thou will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy, mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, Remember what it said in Romans. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How can you believe that he raised him from the dead? How can you believe that you will live forever with the Lord, but you're not doing what the Bible says? You're not doing what the scriptures say. Look what David said in Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You see why he was able to go to the throne? Remember, he got anointed to be a king when he was a teenager. But he didn't get on the throne until he was 30. He ran from Saul all those years, but he never cursed Saul because the Bible says, speak evil of no man. He never killed Saul because the Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. See, David did everything the word said. That's why they kept saying, let, let me smite him right now. He said, no. I cannot touch the Lord anointed. The Lord will avenge and, and fight for me. That's right. He did what the words say, and he was blessed abundantly. That's why you see no matter what those other kings did after him, you will always see in 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicle, they always mention David's name all the way to the end because he, he was a man after God's own heart. He was obedient. He didn't live his life in sin. He lived for God, and he loved God. He worshiped God. Look at all those psalms he wrote. He was praying. You got to develop your prayer life just like him. Look at Daniel. Daniel prayed three times a day. You wonder who inspired me to pray so much. Look at Daniel. I pray just like he prayed. That's right. Three times a day, kneeling down on my knees, face to the ground, in the, in the, in the, in the presence of my king, Jesus, at his feet. That's right. You see? So how can you believe that Christ was raised from the dead? And that you were raised from the dead, but you're living in this world with anxiety, living in this world with fear, living in this world with doubt, living in this world with worry, living in this world with anger, frustration, you know, running to earthly resources to get help, going to hospitals and doctors. Do you really believe that you're going to live forever? When it comes time for you to, to, to depart from this world, then you're going to really know where you truly stand because you're going to be in fear. You're going to, I don't know, if, if I go, resuscitate me. You know, shock my heart. That's right. Because you don't truly believe. There's more required of just believing in Jesus. You have to believe in your heart. That God raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. Because believing that he raised him from the dead, that means no matter what you go through, challenge, tribulation, test, provoke, temptation, you will know that God's word is true. Because that power that resurrected him, you have, you're keeping it in your heart. So you know that that power surpasses any other thing 
that can come your way. To bring back life takes a power that no one has, not even Satan. So if God is able to give life and to, give, and to, 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 to bring the dead back to life, that means that everything else that's written in the word is equal to him raising Christ from the dead because he can't lie. If he raised Christ from the dead, if he say fear not, fear not. If he say love, love. If he say don't be worried about anything, don't be worried. If he tells you you can drink anything deadly and it won't harm you, that means it's true. If he say that you can handle serpents and, 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 and snakes and nothing will, you know, they bite nothing will happen, it's true. You can't believe in one part of the Bible, not in the other part of the Bible. You can't have faith in one area and not have faith in another area. That's not true faith. It's a form of deception. You're only exercising mind control over yourself, making you, making you feel like you believe, but you truly don't. That's why when you get put in situations where you have to act on faith, you become faithless. You see? That's all I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters. It takes more than what you think to serve Jesus. And when you read every, I mean, to make it into glory, when you read every epistle in the four gospels, you agree with me that you have to learn the cost of being a disciple. Everyone forsake all they had. Jesus even said, anyone that has left a house, children, kids, anything for my name's sake, will receive in this life and in the life to come. So you got to know it's much more required than just saying, I believe in you, Jesus. If you believe, then your faith should follow because faith without works is dead. You see? You can't live in fear and say that you believe you're going to live forever. Nah. Once you get 89, your body starts slowing down, that, fear, that spirit of fear that's been in you all those years is going to torment you. You're going to be so afraid. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want to die. I'm, I'm afraid. I don't really know if I'm really going to heaven. See, right now you're young and you're in your prime. But once you start slowing down and you start depending on people to take care of you now because you can't drive anymore, you can't walk anymore like that, you really can't run anymore, now you're gonna start, it's going to start setting in. You no longer can work. You can't really keep yourself, you know, um, um, you know, occupied by being busy. So now you got so much time to think. That fear is going to hit you like a, a bad storm. I'm telling you, you're going to trick yourself all these years, believing that you're going to go to heaven. Then when it comes time to die, you're, going, you're not going to go with open arms. You're going to be fearful. I don't want to leave yet. Ask anybody today that got that. That's, ask anybody today you ready to die. No, I'm not ready to die. I got kids. You know, I got loved ones. I got this and I got that. Well, you're going to always have kids and loved ones. So when is it going to be the time that you're ready to leave? They're not. Many are confessing they don't believe that heaven exists because look at all they're trying to accomplish in this life. And it's going to pass away. The Bible say the things that are seen are temporary. The things that are, un that are not seen are, 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 are everlasting. You're trying to do, be so successful in this life. It doesn't do, it doesn't do anything for you and going in heaven. Only thing that gets you into heaven is doing what the words say, being obedient, not living in sin, living holy, righteous, and godly in this present world, abstaining from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, being obedient to the word, loving your neighbor as yourself, doing what that word say. That's right. So I love you all, brothers and sisters. I pray you all was blessed. I thank you all for fellowshiping with me. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for soldiering on and persevering. I love you all. I'm here for you all. Don't be afraid. Don't be prideful. Remember, we're supposed to fellowship one another with one another. We're supposed to, we should be communicating. I'm only here to help you. But your heart has to be open so God can come in and pour in in you and bless you and all of the great things. So I love you all, brothers and sisters, and I thank you so much for fellowshiping with me. I love you more than you know, and I got your back in Jesus Christ's name. Have a blessed night. Peace be unto you all. And if you do the things that the words say, and you truly obey it and abide in it, the Lord before whom I walk will be with you. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's name. I love you, brothers and sisters. Keep the faith. Stay encouraged. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's mighty name.